everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Twin Motion video. Now today is pretty exciting. I'm going to be looking at the new Path Tracer in Twin Motion 2022, the preview version that just got announced. Just before that, I just wanted to draw your attention to the lovely new website that Twin Motion have uh, come out with. Um, it's a really nice new website. It's a lot clearer, a lot nicer to look at. And there's some really good information on here that you can kind of work through and see what's involved. Also, if you would like to, you can go and look at Y Twin Motion and go to the roadmap. Now, the roadmap is really nice um, because you've got all the under consideration features here, things that are currently in progress. So this is exciting. You can see what's coming. But most importantly, what's been released in this new version 2022 preview here. Um, the two big features I'm going to highlight are the path tracing and the sky domes. But today's video is all about the path tracing. Let's just focus on this. It's such a major new feature. It warrants its own video. And today's video is all about this. Now, just before we jump into the video, I just want to draw your attention to a revolutionize your rendering with Vectorworks and Twin Motion webinar that I'm doing next week with Vectorworks on Tuesday the 16th, uh, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time, so that's about 6.45 UK time. Please come and join us. I'll put the link in the description. It's going to be a great event, and I'll be showing lots of live path tracing as we go through the projects as well. Great, so let's uh, jump into the video. So Twin Motion 2022.1 preview version has an incredible new feature that you are going to love. It now has a path tracer. Now the path tracer is essentially a ray tracing engine. The idea is when you click on the path tracer, you're gonna notice that the image quality renders in a different way. And it's absolutely incredible in terms of things like reflections and the global illumination is a lot more accurate. The thing about the path tracer is all the rays are traced properly. So instead of it being sort of um, things like reflections being kind of uh, calculated by almost like um, an estimation, the path tracer is actually very precise. So as you move around, you can see the pixels um, regenerating. Now it works quite nicely both for interior and exterior. And this is a project you've seen me demonstrating before for an eco home I designed a little while ago. And basically I'm just testing out a few renders here. So when you click on the path tracer button, what you will notice is next door to it is the progress little button here. And if you click on that, you're gonna end up seeing that you can change the uh, quality levels. So I've definitely been playing around with this on the quality side. Now, the higher quality, the more samples you have, uh, the longer it will take. So depending on your graphics card, you're going to expect once the tick kicks in, then you're at the final quality. Um, so what's really nice is you can still jump between all the images that we've done uh, previously in any other version. You can see here's the samples I was talking about. And I can actually strike across here and type in what I would like it to be. I don't know, 32 or 100, something like that. So the lower values will render much faster and the higher values will give you better quality. So that's the beautiful thing about the Pass Trace. So it's a very nice, simple implementation. Um, you know, unlike other rendering software like V-Ray and things like that, which can get very, very complicated, I really do like the simplicity of the Twin Motion interface. It's one of the key benefits of the software. And the new path tracing is absolutely gorgeous in my view. And you can see immediately when you turn it on and off, you know, you can kind of see the difference in the render quality. It just looks so much more natural and so much more realistic. So certainly for still images, this is going to be amazing. Now, I really love the way with Twin Motion you can work without the path tracing on. You can get a very nice preview of the rendering with the lighting and everything. But with a simple click and running it on fairly low settings, you actually get a really good image really, really quickly. So you can see the difference between even eight samples. It's giving me a totally different kind of look and feel. Now you can just about move around and navigate with the path tracing on. Um, but, you know, to get the best experience, you just turn it off navigate around, adjust the view, and then when you're ready, just click the button again. So, you know, looking at it even in uh, low settings, I think the path tracing looks pretty nice. Now, what you will notice is um, there's something called a denoiser that kicks in once the actual rendering process is completed. So once it gets there and it ticks, uh, the denoiser kicks in and it looks nice and smooth. So you can even go into full screen mode, and here we are in full screen mode. You'll notice the buildings disappeared. But that's because this is a phasing. 
So all I need to do, <laughs> change my phasing, is slide my phasing up and suddenly the building gets built and you can see a couple of people outside having a party. And, you know, all of that was done with the path tracer actually activated. So, you know, my graphics card is pretty good on this computer. This is my PC with a 2080 Ti from a few years ago, and it's good. Now, obviously, in the last couple of years, we've had other graphics cards, the 3080 and 3090 series of graphics cards, even more powerful than the 20 series. And, you know, according to my friends who have those graphics cards, they can almost work in real time in low quality settings. So if you're one of those people who likes to be able to kind of work in those settings, you're going to need a top end graphics card. Uh, but for everybody else, I love the fact you can just turn it on and off and you can kind of like afford to wait a few seconds. It's not a problem. Now you can see it does work quite nicely for externals as well. So let's go um, outside. It works really well for interiors, obviously with all the reflections and global illumination. But I've just enabled that path tracer for this external. You can see that the light bounces around um, up under the soffit there. That's a lot nicer. The GI, uh, things like the reflections as well of the glass, much, much more accurate. And all of that is in high setting at the moment. So if we just drop down to low, it's gonna be really, really quick, you know, almost real time, not quite, but almost real time. As soon as we let go, uh, it moves. So my philosophy with this path tracer is it's very simple to operate. Um, it's really nice how you can just adjust the quality and the speed of it really easily. And the beauty is you can just with a single button, turn it on and off when required. Now, if you do go to actual renders themselves into the images, you're going to notice that you also have much more settings in here. Um, so basically, you can adjust the path tracer on and off from that setting in there as well. And that's quite nice as a sort of comparison. You've then got the samples, so you can kind of slide the samples. Um, you can also adjust the maximum bounces. Now, that will make quite a difference on reflectivity and speed. Um, once you get beyond about three bounces, you may not kind of see that much difference unless it's a very reflective space with lots of transparency. With the denoiser off, you do notice that it gets very, very grainy. So unless you have a very high sample count, um, you're always going to want to keep that denoiser on, I would suggest. So just before we conclude the video and review some of the path trace renders that I've done for this video, what I really wanted to show you is an exciting project that I've been working on for quite some time. Revolutionize your rendering with Twinmotion is completed and will be available for sale, both in EPUB, PDF, and also hardback very shortly. It's a really nice book. It talks about the kind of background of twin motion. There's lots of really nice sort of sections in it as well. Um, all sorts of things you can pick up there. It's actually a really big book. It's about 300 pages. So if you're interested, let me know and um, you can kind of snap up a copy of that. I'll be adding a new chapter on the new features of the preview release. So feel free to have a look at the website and snap a copy up now. So with the new version of Twinmotion 2022.1 preview, there's also a very nice new demonstration scene you'll find under preferences called the Lake House Retreat. Now here we're looking at some images which are both non-path trace, the old style, and the new style with path tracing. So I'll highlight which are the different ones for you, but hopefully you can see there's a huge difference in the render quality um, basically, the images look a lot brighter, especially in the corners where the global illumination is working properly with the path tracing. The other area you look better is the glass and the transparency, things like reflectivity, and generally the images just come alive a lot more with a lot more detail in the uh, darker areas as well. So, as I say, I really like the style of the normal twin motion images, but to be honest, once you go down the route of the path tracer, the images do look so much nicer. Um, you'll kind of be a bit unsatisfied with the original twin motion renders, but that's okay. I think it serves a real purpose for both still images, animations. Looking forward to doing a lot more testing soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you get all the updates on the amazing new features of twin motion 2022 in my next videos. Thanks for watching everybody. See you soon. Bye bye.